Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the show. We're going to be talking about that case down in Texas where that one bandito got pulled over, had a CCW legally, and still got arrested. Well, it's now in court, and there's been a decision handed down by the appellate court. And I, I have to say, I'm kind of surprised. And the reason why I'm surprised is you would have never thought that Texas, of all places, would be going against the Second Amendment. Nowhere in the Second Amendment does it say, well, if you're a part of this organization, you cannot possess a gun. No, it says you have the right, the right, to bear arms. My God. What is going on where people, it's, it's a simple document, people. You should be able to read it. Read it in its context as it was written and make a decision. Not complicated. What has these courts, though, done? since that document's been written. They put in their own ideals on the way it should read. You know, last time I read a book, for all the dumb people out there, you read the book, you see what it says, and boom, it's done. Now, not with these lawyers, not with these people that want to make laws. You know, it's... The Constitution has gotten so far away from what it's supposed to be, it's actually silly. Let's take a look at the Supreme Court. You got nine justices on there, appointed by political parties. By the way, there's only two in this country right now that's really anything, because them two parties try keeping the other parties out of the mix. Like in Wisconsin, I believe, they just kicked the Green Party off the ballot. Why? Because it's a battleground state and they'll take away votes from Joe Biden. That's not the way elections are supposed to work. Not supposed to work. But we got a monarchy now. You know, I've always said if I had a time machine, I'd go back in time to the signing right before it and say, you know what? You guys just fought a monarchy. You beat them. Now we're free. But you numbnuts created another one. With no term limits on congressmen. None at all. But they sure to hell put one on uh, the president after uh, Roosevelt. Because, hey, he actually got elected to a third term. We can't have that. But you got people that are serving 30, 40, 50 years in Congress. They make the rich off the people's backs. So those are the t- people that appoint justices for life. Now you got to remember, back when the Constitution was signed, life expectancy was like 40, 45 years old. They would never imagined a justice live until they're 75, 80, 90 years old. You got that one, Ginsburg, she's going through so many health problems. You know what? They're only keeping her propped up there to see if they win the election. That's not how justice is supposed to be blind. That's not how justice is supposed to be done. Propping somebody up. No, I believe judges should be independent. But no, we got all these activist judges out there that can't read a damn piece of freaking paper. How is it that this guy had a legal right to carry, but because Texas says he's a gang member, he can't carry, even though he got the permit. Unreal. You know what? That's a sad state of affairs when this kind of stuff is happening. When one local ordinance can trump the Constitution of the United States. That's not how it's supposed to be. I thought we uh, settled that issue that uh, the federal uh, law is above all else after the Civil War. I thought that was settled. That federal law trumps state law. That's what was the president set. 
even though it's dangerous, even though the framers of the Constitution believed in state rights over federal rights. You tell me, man. I just find it real disturbing that a state like Texas would be involved in this. And personally, it, it basically what it was, it was kicked to the trial court to decide these issues because they said they didn't have a right to do it. So basically, he has to spend all the damn money, go through the trial stuff, and the trial judge is already against this guy. If you kept up with the story, you could see that he's against them. So it's going to go down there, and then they're not going to take up the issues until after trial. So now he has to spend all this damn money. When it's point blank right there, he had a right to carry. A right. But because he was wearing a patch of a club, they say it's a criminal organization. And that's one thing I can't freaking stand. I really can't. Is how they can designate a motorcycle club a criminal organization because a few people do stupid stuff. I've said it all the time. Most one percenters I know, they work hard. They go to work every single day just like these jackasses that are deciding that they're a criminal gang. They work in blue collar jobs, most of them, but you know what? A lot of white collar uh, people are now in the clubs. But they're a criminal gang off the actions of a couple people? How is that even possible? Even in a RICO case, they only max, what, 13, 15, whatever the number is, people in that case. They do not represent the whole club. And most of some of these clubs have over two, 3,000 members. So how can you designate them all as a criminal organization? And a lot of these guys are vets. Now, I don't know, uh, you know, I'm not going to misspeak here. He, I think he was a vet, but I'm not going to say for sure. He served his country. He had his CCW. How do you do that to him? How do you do that? Why, we got all these protesters out there acting a fool. You guys won't do nothing about them. But these guys, because they're wearing a patch, you're going to do this. You know what? A real judge would see through this and say, you know what? No. Enough's enough. But it don't work that way. Because judges are in cahoots with prosecutors almost on a daily basis. It's like the judge, they don't even freaking make decisions. It's all on the prosecution. You know, they sit there, they go out for drinks with these people. That shouldn't be allowed. We need judges that are independent from both parties. Both of them. That is the only way true justice is going to be seen. The, it, it, after, you know, because I'm going to go through it, read it, and all that jive. And you're going to see what I'm seeing, hopefully, you know, on that subject. You know, a lot of people have been coming back and saying, well, what you said about one percenters not being on the Internet is not true. They got profiles. You know what? Put your listening ears on. Okay? Put them on. I said I don't see a lot of white, the ones in the, the white one percenter uh, segment going and giving protocol advice in their colors is what I said. I never said they didn't do this or do that. I was speaking specifically, you do not see any one percenter from uh, the Hells Angels, uh, the AOA Pagans, any of that stuff having a show giving protocol advice. That's what I said. So go back Listen to the segment. Put your ears on. 
you know, I think that's the one thing that really gets to somebody like me is it could be so easy. Like I'm talking about looking at a piece of paper. This is what it said. Okay. Okay. Go back to the segment. This is what I said. Okay. But no, it goes 50 freaking ways from Sunday the way people read into it. That's why when there's a crime and this is a proven fact. When there's multiple witnesses, you can't trust any of them because they have different perceptions of what happened at the scene. Exactly what happened here. And it kind of ties in together, you know, because I was reading it and then I was coming up with it in my mind like, you know what, it's so easy to read the Constitution. But then, you know, I heard, you know, a couple people got pissed off that I say, you know, one percenters from the white set you rarely see them online giving protocol advice that's what i said it is like it blew up into well i know one percenters that have facebook and uh, uh, did you even listen stop whacking your pecker and listen to what i said that's simple and then of course i get the racist stuff well you know you were talking about the white set the black set Oh my God, get over the racist crap. You know what? Grow up, get some balls, let them drop, whatever the hell you have to do. If you can't get into a serious discussion, then you don't even need to be around this uh, station. My God. Uh, <laughs> talking about the station, by the way. Man, I did not know how much tech you really had to know to get a station online, man. All the programming, this and that. And woo! yeah but i do have the new promos coming up the sweepers will be coming out soon uh, a lot of hard work going into it so hopefully you guys like it uh, we're gonna have uh the rock uh 80s rock all that kind of stuff on there blues uh we're getting together a couple talk shows right now so make sure you check that out also also don't forget to pound rock on man pound rock it on but let's go into this case man because it's got me real disturbed and it should have you disturbed as well okay here we go from reason.com texas statue banning quote criminal street gang members from carrying handguns in their cars or boats now this is from becker versus the state it was decided yesterday by the Texas Court of Appeals in an opinion by Chief Justice Brian Quinn. And here's what it says. It is a crime for a member of a criminal street gang to carry a handgun while in a car or boat if he owns or controls those vehicles. Apparently, the same cannot be said of that same criminal street gang member carrying it while walking, riding a bike, or even riding a horse. Nor is it true, under the express wording of the statue, if he carries the firearm while riding in a car or boat owned and controlled by someone else, including a fellow criminal street gang member. How about riding on a motorcycle? The statue refers to carrying the weapon, quote, in a motor vehicle, like riding Mother Nature's horse, riding a two-wheeled iron, one in vowels being atop or on it. Of course, one may scoff at drawing such hyper-technical distinctions, but do not such hyper-technical distinctions already exist in a statue that criminalizes possession of a handgun while driving his own car but not while driving or being driven in another person's car or while simply walking on the street. So far, the judge is questioning the statue. Let us try another, and he's given a bunch of stuff. Shall we? What if the state license that supposed criminal street gang member to carry the firearm in so licensing the person logic suggests that it approved of his carrying the firearm or weapon which is true the guy had a ccw <sighs> though not a a criminal for purposes of securing a license 
The person apparently becomes one simply by sitting in his own car or boat when the item he was licensed to carry. But the statute underlying his prosecution lies within chapter 46 of the penal code. Elsewhere in the very same chapter of the very same code lies another provision. It provides that in section 46.02 does not apply to a person who is carrying both a license issued under subchapter uh, H, chapter 411, government code to carry a handgun and a handgun, it says, in a concealed manner or in a shoulder or belt holster. The potential impact of the later statute upon the state's prosecution of Becker for violating a subpart is apparent. If 46.15 means what it says, his having a license to carry may well remove him from the teeth of 46.02. So there looks like there's all kinds of contradictions right now. Those are a few of the mystifying mind teasers revol uh, revolving around this appeal from an order denying Ashley Becker's pretrial writ of habeas corpus. Yet, Becker was not in a motor vehicle, but on his motorcycle. Furthermore, his purported status as a, quote, criminal street gang member allegedly arose upon joining the Banditos Motorcycle Club. He argued below and here that focusing merely on his membership in the purported criminal street gang to prosecute him for carrying a firearm that the state licensed him to carry a violated a myriad of his constitutional rights. The trial court disagreed and denied both his fascia and as applied constitutional attacks levied against 4602. We have been afforded the opportunity to consider that decision but forego it at this time. Meaning they're not going to make a decision until this case is, you know, done and over with in the trial. The facts of the case. Becker and another motorcycle rider wore vests depicting membership in the Banditos. The later organization was confirmed as an outlaw motorcycle gang, according to the deputy. And upon approaching, quote, both motorcyclists, he spoke first with Becker, who handed the deputy a Texas driver's license and a Texas license to carry, just like he's supposed to. A concealed weapon. Upon seeing the license to carry, the deputy asked Becker if he possessed a handgun. Becker advised he had his gun on his hip. Becker's carrying the weapon allegedly violated 4602. The court concluded, however, that under Texas appellate procedure, it couldn't reach these issues on a pretrial writ of habeas corpus. Presumably, they will need to be raised in various motions before the trial court, and then, perhaps, in an appeal after trial. Basically, the way I'm reading this is they're kind of giving guidance to the trial court because they got a lot of freaking questions, and boy, should they. Because their statues is all screwed up. He wasn't a criminal until he joined the Banditos. Until he joined it. But at the same time, he was licensed to carry. See how confusing this is going to get? But you know what? The trial judge, he's a moron. He's a jerk. If you've been following this case, you can see he's a jerk. But it seems like he's got a lot of hope in the appellate courts if it goes awry in the lower court basically if you read between the lines the appellate courts is telling the trial court maybe you want to dismiss this crap because one thing violates the other and you know i i find it hilarious how he was talking about mother's nature or his horse or riding a two-wheeled iron one involves being a top of it he's basically tearing apart the statue of the state right there if you ask me you know here you know let's go back to this let's us try another shall we he says what if the state licensed that supposed criminal street gang member to carry the firearm 
And so licensing the person, logic suggests that it approved of his carrying of the weapon. Very good point, man. I think that one's that point right there stings them. It really does. It stings right there. Uh, uh, that's a logical question. The state approved it, but just because he joined the banditos, which you guys claim are a criminal gang, now all of a sudden he can get arrested even though you approved him for the license because now he's a gang member. This statue makes no sense at all, and the way I read it, the way I read it, I don't know how you're going to read it, is the appellates are like, what the hell is going on? There's so many contradictions, there's no way you can convict on this. More in our final thoughts. Uh, let's go over to Australia. Nothing stopped the rebels' bikey from trafficking drugs, guns, and ordering drive-by shooting. Rebels Sergeant at Arms Matthew Bruce is facing life behind bars for trafficking drugs, guns, and ordering drive-by shootings. That's until he was finally arrested in February last year and now faces life imprisonment. Well, nothing as it turned out would stop you other than your arrest, Victorian County Court Judge Bill Smart. The 37-year-old carried out his lawless conduct even when police raided a friend's house where he stored his cache of weapons, including an SKS assault rifle, a military bolt action rifle and Adler shotgun and handguns. Those SKSs, man. You know what? I had one. I should have never got rid of it because the prices went through the freaking roof. I love an SKS. Uh, quote, you could have decided to lay low. You did not. For three months until his arrest, anti-bikey police watched Bruce use telephone intercepts and a tracker to uncover his criminal enterprise, the court was told. He drove a car with the license plate feared to buy ice, cannabis, and weapons or sent his partner to do his bidding. Can, uh, does uh, Australia have any medical over there? I'm just wondering because I don't know their laws. I know uh, it's all legal in Canada. Uh, it's legal statewide depending on what you live in, you know, in the United States. Our freaking feds still haven't done nothing. Uh, but do you guys get medical over there? At one point, he took his infant daughter to the Wombat State Force and fired the high-powered SKS rifle with a cigarette in his mouth as his then-partner recorded the footage. He's going shooting with his kid, you know, teaching her the freaking ways of the, you know, handling a weapon, maybe. Uh, he sent a text to his twin sister about trying to sell the weapon, quote, I need to effing sell that effing machine gun, did that guy want it or not? He also trafficked uh, more than 3.5 kilograms of ice, buying it from an associate and a gang known as the Syndicate. Bruce also admitted to organizing a Valentine's Day arson attack in 2019 on two cars after an associate in prison requested it. Two days later, he organized a drive-by shooting at a house in Harkness, setting up two cronies with a higher car and shotgun used to carry out the attack. The enforcer pleaded guilty to offenses including drug trafficking, possession of trafficable uh, a quantity of unregistered firearms. Why would anybody want to register them anyway in Australia, man? You guys are too strict on guns. Uh, you do not have a Second Amendment there. Uh, he was negligent in dealing with the proceeds of crime, arson, attempting to obtain property by deception and discharging a firearm. Uh, the sentencing, which ran for more than three hours, will continue. You know, one thing I don't understand, and this is from Europe, Australia, anywhere that has all these gun bans. How do you expect your people to fight a war? I don't get it. I really don't. They're not going to know their weapons and stuff. It's like, boom, boom. Uh, you know, we had these uh, shootings, and now we take uh, away everybody's rights. And like I talked about in the 90s, when that one happened, Australians just gladly handed over their guns. Unfreaking real. Why would you do that? Uh, Biker Dad, Minnesota confirms 15 COVID-19 cases connected to the Sturges rally. 
Great. Which is have signs encouraging social distancing and mask use, but neither are mandated. A New Jersey man says he wears a mask because he has underlying health concerns, and he promised his family to wear one. He also agrees with Governor Kristi Noem's approach. She's leaving the choice to the people, and I believe it should be the choice. Yeah, that, you know what? They didn't put on uh, what this was about. That's just their video of the rally. Uh, Kilo, the Minnesota Department of Health, said on August 21st that 15 cases of COVID-19 in the state are linked to the Sturgis motorcycle rally. Doug Schultz of the MDH said one case link Sturgis was identified before the 21st, but the number grew to 15. Quote, it looks like they are starting to roll in, Schultz said. The rally was held from the 7th through the 16th. The South Dakota Department of Transportation counted about 462,000 vehicles at nine entry points during the rally. The city of Sturgis also considers pre-rally uh, days and post-rally days when planning the event as some motorcyclists come before the rally and others stay. WCCO-TV reported that at least one of the 15 people with COVID is in the hospital. Health officials have asked rally attendees to self-isolate uh, and get tested. About 8% of the 2019 rally attendees were from Minnesota. Uh, as of the 21st, the South Dakota DOH has released six potential COVID-19 exposure alerts. During the time of the rally, five are in Sturges and one in Hill City. So, like I said, while they were covering all this stuff, they were calling it a Petri dish for COVID-19. And now uh, they are going to freaking really, really exploit this one. Uh, interesting story from uh, Ghost. He is uh, one of our uh, listeners. Uh, Ex-CIA agent arrested, charged with spying for China for years. Great. Uh, a former uh, Central Intelligence Agency officer was arrested and faces charges he spied for China for years. Uh, Alexander Yu Ching Ma, 67, a 15-year agent of the CIA, was charged for selling U.S. secrets to China. NBC reported Ma reportedly disclosed a substantial amount of highly classified national defense information to five members of the Chinese Ministry of State Security, including the identities of CIA officers and human assets. Go freaking figure shoot this guy. Information about the CIA's internal organization and means of CIA communication. Ma worked for the CIA from 67 to 89 and was assigned to work overseas in the East Asia and Pacific region during part of his CIA tenure. The meeting between Ma and the Chinese officers reportedly happened about 12 years after his retirement from the agency. Around some time in 2001, according to the charging documents obtained by Los Angeles Times, Ma kept in touch with the Chinese contacts as he applied for an FBI position in 2004. Over the next six years, Ma allegedly downloaded, collected, or otherwise photographed sensitive information to pass along to China until he uh, stopped working for the FBI in 2010. The FBI is really out there now, isn't it, man? Freaking corrupt bastards. Ma was reportedly caught after FBI began a sting operation in January 2019. The FBI had reportedly held suspicions about Ma for years, but it was unclear as to why the FBI waited as long as it had to investigate him. As part of the sting operation, an FBI agent pretended to be a Chinese government auditor reviewing the Chinese government's handling of Ma as an intelligence source. The FBI reportedly showed Ma a video of his 2001 meeting with the Chinese officials to gain his trust. It was not immediately clear how the FBI attained the footage. <laughs> Ma, you know what? I hate traitors. I really do. And you know what? If you have nationals working in our intelligence agencies, we're, that's some scary stuff. Uh, you should have people that are just, you know, born in the United States. Just my opinion. Uh, after playing the footage, the FBI gained his trust and got him to further admit uh, meetings that he worked for the Chinese. 
So that out of American military news. Great to hear that one, isn't it, guys? Uh, now, Corey Graff's Wall of Shame. Former city police officer gets 20 years in federal prison for, guess what? For rapes while on duty. A former Chattanooga police officer was sentenced on Wednesday to serve 20 years in federal prison for rapes while on duty. Judge Curtis Collar gave the maximum sentence to Desmond Logan. He had been charged for the three rapes that prosecutors say occurred along with two sexual assaults on the other women. He would have faced 30 years to life, the judge noted. Logan earlier pleaded guilty to violating the civil rights of two of the rape victims. As such, he faced 10 years on each count. Logan at first declined to make a statement when Judge uh, Collier said it might be important for him to do so. Logan started out, I guess I'd like to apologize, I guess. <laughs> he said, everything is not as it appears. I'm not a bad person. I've made several mistakes, but I never, ever hurt anybody. Logan maintained that he has not had one bad day since I've been incarcerated. I've actually very close to God. You always notice when you get locked up, they get close to God real quick. Uh, prosecutor James Brooks said the abuse of an absentee or arrestee is truly horrendous. This conduct should warrant a hefty sentence. Judge Collier said, quote, when a law enforcement officer breaks the law, it breeds distrust for the law and that breeds anarchy. They don't mess around in Tennessee. Uh, he said the crimes committed cast a shadow on every person wearing a badge. Well, his crimes and everybody else's crimes. Uh, you know, we do the wall of shame every uh, segment, so yeah. I can show you more, Judge. <laughs> Logan will be recommended for a sexual offender evaluation. He will be on the sex offender registry when he gets out. He will be on supervised release for three years. Uh, the Department of Justice will vigorously prosecute officers who commit sexual assault, said the Assistant Attorney General Eric Dreamond on the Civil Rights Division. This case is a reminder that sexual assault allegations involving law enforcement officers should be fully investigated. The department will continue to take such allegations seriously and work to vindicate the constitutional rights of those who are victimized by officers acting under the color of the law. Quote, the actions of Desmond Logan jeopardized public safety and violated the trust of the citizens of Chattanooga he swore to protect. This case exhibits our continued efforts to prosecute those who would abuse their authority to commit acts of violence and injustice against members of our community. Well, there you go, your wall of shame. <laughs> it's always one of them three, man. It, you know, it is. It's always one of those three. So, let's go to my... Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Okay, welcome back to the show. Man, I'm telling you what, that first story and with my opening, what do you guys think after hearing some of that opinion? That appellate judge actually brought up some huge points and I'm wondering if the appellate judge on that bandito uh, case is telling the lower court hey you might want to rethink this because there's all kinds of crap in here that don't make sense I do not understand why this case is even going forward it, it just don't make no sense to me and now that they got this ruin, uh, ruling they got to understand that they're not going to make it on appeal, so why even go after the case in the first place? It's actually sounding like the judge is saying, hey, the legislator better get back in the session here and say, hey, you know what, fix this law. Because this law is too vague. There's too many uh, contradictions in it. You know, personally, again, I don't think you know, if the guy the guy was licensed, 
They already said he was cool until he joined this freaking club. I don't think you can do to the, that to the citizens of this country. I really don't. And I think that is why I'm such a supporter of the Second Amendment. But I'm also a, a big supporter of reading the Constitution as it was written. Enough of these, you know, well, I think this and I think that. You know, we have a wonderful, beautiful freaking country. The United States, you know, my opinion is the best around. It is. We got a lot of good stuff that the founders put in there that needed to be put in there. But at the same time, over the years, the centuries, it's all been eroded. All eroded because people think that the Constitution should mean something in their time period. And that's not the... It, it, they think it's a living document where it changes. No. No. It was written as it was. So for people who think it should change with times, you're schlucks. Let me guess, it should change to fit your needs and not everybody as a whole. But Texas, what the hell is wrong with you, man? Everybody looks at Texas like, you know what? They're one of the toughest God-fearing freaking states in this country. They're hardcore uh, Second Amendment. Then you got stuff like this coming out. Not cool. You know, if it does continue, it's probably going to be a, a, a president... Uh, a precedent uh, case among everything else going on down there. Just like that freaking Waco cases are being learnt in schools now. You know, just sad state of affairs, if you ask me. Sad state of affairs. And, you know, I'm kind of upset with, you know, the Sturgis thing because we all knew that the media was going to really hammer on that one. They hammered on it the whole damn time. And out of 460,000. So far, you know, because I know there's some in Nebraska and now Minnesota, uh, it hasn't been an epidemic level coming out of there. But at the same time, you know, we're going to have to see. But I knew that the media was going to use this against bikers. Because the media don't like bikers. Let's be honest. They don't. They see all bikers as bikers for Trump, and that's just not the case. But that's how they lump everybody together. Hey, bikers are all for Trump, and we're against Trump, so let's uh, bash on them. Maybe, you know, that's why they'll never, ever give clubs a fair shot in the paper. Never, ever. And that's one of the reasons I like doing this show is to give them pushback. And if clubs want to give their side of the story, come on on. Let's give that side of the story. Uh, finally, uh, you know, we know about the wall of shame and all that stuff. It's just like, are you serious with these freaking cops? Always the three same crimes, man. It all has to do with a power trip uh, because they got the badge and the gun. You know, let's face it. Let's be honest. That's the way it is. You know, it's always that power trip. Uh, but that spy thing, man, I just can't stand when you get spies. Don't they understand they live in the best country in the world as, you know, according to us Americans, uh, the freedom that we have, but you want to go and sell secrets to China? Are you shitting me? Really? A communist regime where you can't even piss without the government's freaking uh, okay. I really don't understand why people would do something like that. Hopefully you're treated like a traitor. You know, you know the United States, they really don't uh, do what they're supposed to with traitors. They put them in there for life. No, shoot them. You're, you're worthless people. You're worthless. Done, done. Get them out of here. You chose to betray our country for money. For money. So why should we care about paying money to keep you incarcerated? That's just my freaking way of looking at that stuff. It, it's just unreal how people uh, look at that. And, you know, getting back to my opening as far as the last segment. Again, go back, listen to the damn segment. Don't form your own damn opinions. You know, of what I said is what I mean. Look at actually what I said and you'll know. Hey. 
All I said was, you don't see these guys out there giving protocol advice. I never once said that, hey, they don't have social media. You know, those are the, you know, the haters that run with that type of stuff. And me and BD actually had a talk today. Is like, you know what? You got to have thick skin when you're doing this type of stuff. Because you're in front of everybody. You're worldwide. Everybody knows who the fuck you are. Everybody knows, uh, you know. They go, they try to troll. Let's put it that way. And you have to have thick skin. And me and BD talked about that. You know, we talked about, you know, a lot of the other creators and, you know, how a lot, you know, uh, you know, because he is kind of upset. Uh, he's like, man, all they do is go to my channel. They take the titles of my channel, uh, redo it a little bit and give, you know, their side of it. You know, basically they do it without giving me any freaking credit. And I got to say, you know, if you go to look at BDs and then some of these other creators talking about it on the same subject, yeah, they're going to his stuff because one of the hardest things to do besides talking into a mic for the radio station like I do or looking at a damn camera so you guys can see the radio station is come up with content. That is the hardest thing to do to keep an audience engaged. And BD's right, man. They go to his videos for ideals and then they give their spin and boom, next thing you know, they created it. And without giving him any credit, that is BS, man. That's some hardcore BS. And he deserves to be pissed off about that. <laughs> he really does. You know, it's hard to copy the stuff that I do because I do a lot of biker news and I'm a radio guy. So it's a lot harder to copy what I do. But when YouTube is your main platform... That's when you see, all, you know, the videos and stuff like that. Me, I can care less about videos, but you guys want to say hi to me and stuff. So, hey, that's cool. Uh, but when YouTube's your main platform and somebody else is taking your video ideals, not giving you credit, that's some bogus-ass crap, man. So, BD, I get where you're coming from. I understand. Uh, you know, I wish creators would work together, man. Do you, can you imagine if we had a roundtable? Uh, each week we picked a subject we all gave our thoughts on it let the audience freaking decide you know what they think of it you know all creators would actually benefit from that they would they would uh, benefit for that they get content because everybody would be able to you know cut it up and show segments give additional thoughts but a lot of people ain't going to do that because it's a money game on YouTube See, YouTube, for me, you don't make any damn money. It's like two, three dollars a freaking thousand, freaking whatever it is. You know, my bucks come from the radio, man. That's the way it's always been. I got a huge listener base on the late, uh, radio. And that's where my wheelhouse is. You know, that's why I'm coming up with the new radio station. We're going to be playing rock and all that kind of stuff. You know, the new promos just went out on our, our Facebook page. That's where I feel comfortable is radio. You know, we're going to have the Wake and Bake uh, morning show Monday through Friday right after uh, the airing of Insane Throttle's uh, Motorcycle Madhouse uh, Biker News Show. And then I'll take you guys over to the radio and we really have fun, man. DJing like hell and the whole nine yards, but that's why I do not put so much effort into YouTube. Yeah, I can go and shoot videos, talk about this, talk about that, make them real pretty, but that is like pointless to a guy like me because my main thing's radio. So the hours upon hours of editing a video is taken away from my main platform and that's something you know i'm just not willing to do you know i love doing uh where i shoot the show on video and premiering it that way i had to talk to everybody because it's a little easier than trying to do all that stuff and answer questions in the email uh but bd's main platform is youtube just like the other you know some of the other ones and it sucks that uh 
they steal his shit, you know. I'd be out there calling everybody out, but, you know, that's up to BD what he's going to do. Uh, talking about the radio, September 1st, I'll be premiering. <laughs> You're going to love it. Wake and bake, baby. Wake and bake morning show. We're going to have a lot of discussions and not only about biking stuff, man. It's going to be a real show and we're going to get out there and have some fun, have some music mixed in. The whole nine yards. I know uh, Corey Graff is getting something ready. Uh, we have some others interested in getting some shows going. Uh, BD might be throwing some stuff on the station. Hey, if you're a YouTube creator or any other type of creator and you want to put a show on our radio station, I ain't going to charge you. You to put it on. I work with everybody. And I'm not going to sit there and freaking talk stupid about people. That's, you know, that's weak ass shit. But uh, anyway, thanks for listening, guys. Really appreciate it. You have a good one. I'm I'm out of man. Goodbye. See you Rebels. later. Adios. Ciao. So long. Get your hat. Oh, so you want to know how to support the show? Go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock on. Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycling news, motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community motorcycle club editorials and more and don't forget to visit us on facebook get involved in the conversation watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more also we have instagram yes instagram we have material that is not seen anywhere else so don't forget get on our platforms check out your daily biker news rock on Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all about baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at BaggerSyndicateCycles.com. The show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!